Hey YouTube, how's everybody doing today? Damien here, TLH um, YouTube channel. I want to do a quick video before I got the door for work today. Uh, something I was thinking about last night, um, and that is knives, hunting knives. So I see a lot of advertisements lately, uh, especially in um, hunting rags, um, magazines, YouTube even, uh, any of the websites you go on about hunting or people's Instagram and things like that. Um, I see a lot of advertisement for uh, custom-made knives or semi-custom knives, I want to call it. Montana Knife Company, Half Face Blades, uh, companies like that. Although, great companies, fantastic companies. Um, one thing I want people to realize when they go into hunting, especially if they're new to it or if they're just starting out or whatever it may be, you don't need a custom knife or semi-custom knife or a $500 fixed blade whatever uh, to, to hunt. It's just, it's just not necessary. So don't, don't really buy into that hype. That's something I talked about in my last video. Um, when I mentioned, uh, hunt quietly and the, the kind of the hunt quietly movement and, and things we're trying to do with that organization. Um, you know, we don't need these things to get out and enjoy hunting and to be successful. Uh, so that being said, uh, a couple knives I want to talk about here real quick. Uh, one big one that I get talked about, or excuse me, asked about all the time are replaceable blade knives. The very first re replaceable blade I ever used was the Gerber, all right? And this Gerber is a great knife. I like it. Um, I actually bought it before a Sandhill Crane Hunt in Texas and worked swimmingly on that. Um, it's great for boning. It works good for skinning. Um, it's not the best all-purpose knife. Uh, you can see here, it's pretty easy blade release. Push that button, blade comes out, slides back in. Um, Havilons, the company that made replaceable blade knives, kind of famous and put them on the map. Um, this, the Gerber's nice. I have a whole slew of blades for it in this box right here. I think there's about five or ten left. Um, and it's got actually a trash receptacle for used blades, which is kind of nice. You know, one, one of the things you'll, you'll, you'll find out uh, about the replaceable blade knives is they can be. I haven't seen one yet that maybe wasn't a little bit dangerous. Um, these pop out. They get fat and stuff in them. Sometimes the blades come loose. You got to watch out for that on this Gerber and the Havilons. Um, a lot of companies make these knives. They're great and they're really good for their intended use. You just got to watch yourself with them. Uh, another great um, replaceable blade that I got here um, is your Outdoor Edge. Now the Outdoor Edge is pretty nice. It's a little different than it's got a bigger full size blade, almost like a Buck 110 size blade. And you push the button on the side and the blade just comes out. All right. And I've got a whole slew of these blades too. Uh, they come in packages like this, like I think it's a package of six or something in here or three. Um, and, I, you know, they're great. Again, this is a little bit more of a clip point as opposed to a drop point. It's got a little deeper belly here, so it's better for skinning. Um, and these are great. I mean, skinning an animal or two or three or four animals really takes a toll on its blade. If you don't want to sharpen a bunch and you don't have time for it, these are awesome. The only thing I ask you to do with these replaceable blade knives is, one, watch yourself. They're not, you know, sturdy, fixed. Uh, they're not a standalone blade. They can come out. They can pop off. Um, so be careful when you use them. And two, do not leave these in the field. Um, leaving the Havilon blades, the Gerbers, the uh, Outdoor Edge blades in the field, that's not good. We don't want to do that. These things take forever to you know, degrade. Essentially, they just have to rust and, and dust away. That'd take 100 years for some of these blades. They're surgical stainless steel. Um, animals could get into a carcass, get a hold of one of these little blades, especially like the Gerbers, swallow that, it kills them from inside, that'd be an awful death. So do not leave these laying out in the field. Dispose of them properly. All right? So that's replaceable blade knives, which again are awesome. My most favorite uh, knife that I've carried for probably 25 years or 20 years is a Buck Vanguard. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of Buck knives in general because it's kind of one of the, to me, it's like the, the last great American knife maker, just kind of for what I would call a common man. Uh, Buck's been around for a long time. Um, you can get on their website. You can buy all kinds of knives. Not all the knives they make are made in America anymore. They do have some made overseas, but, but the core, the core series of, of hunting knives and fixed blades and, and, uh, and there's a lot of, uh, foldables that, that are made in the U S and they're, they're great knives. Great warranty, great company. Again, kind of an American shrine, right? So this is the Buck Vanguard. It came out originally with just this clip point and no gut hook in it. Um, this is called the Vanguard Zipper. 
and this knife has probably dressed, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 deer, uh, some mule deer, all kinds of other animals. I've had this knife forever. It's got a good sharp edge on it. It's got the gut hook in there, which if you're not real familiar, puncture a hole in the belly of whatever animal that you're getting ready to field dress, get this hook in that hole, and in a perfect world, no hair buildup, you can just pull this along and it slices that hide so you don't puncture the, the gut channel or the gut cavity um, and the stomach and things like that. So again, this is a great fixed blade. Now, there's companies like Benchmade, uh, Montana, Spyderco even has a couple. Uh, there's a lot of companies, again, these higher end knives, Benchmade is the low end of the high end on some of them, that are, that are basically selling you a knife like this in the $199 to $500 range. Um, you can still get these for a hundred bucks, sometimes cheaper on eBay. Um, look around. The Vanguard is probably one of the best hunting knives ever made as far as simplicity. Uh, they come with a Cordura plastic line sheath. You can get them with leather as well. You can get them with rosewood grips. Um, they're just great. Brass pommels. I love them. Um, another offshoot of that Vanguard there is this Excel, and that's a buck. It's got a much deeper belly. So for skinning and bringing down the hide, skinning, this excels pretty good. It's got the gut hook as well. And that's just my happenstance. I bought the one with the gut hook. Um, I don't have to have gut hook knives. Sometimes they're handy. Again, that's a buck. Orange blade, good sheath. That has field dressed and skinned a lot of deer. Uh, again, it's a knife that gets used a lot. Um, then I go to my smaller bucks here, which you probably have seen these in deer camp. If you have a deer camp or if you have uncles or cousins or granddads or dads to hunt, um your little pathfinders this is the 102 okay this is also a 102 this is a tiny little knife in a nice compact little sheath and i'm telling you what this thing will get things done this knife is great um it's great for almost anything you can field dress it's a clip point um uh excuse me a drop point um they just flat work you don't need a giant knife on your side to do really any field dressing chores, I mean, all the way up to an elk, this is fine. Keep it sharp, know how to use it, and this is a great knife, okay? Uh, a lot of people cut their teeth on a Buck 119 Special, which is a larger version of this guy. They have a really nice deep-bellied concave skinner of this guy. Um, there's a the Pathfinder, the Micro, the Trail Hunter. There's a whole bunch in this series of buck hunting knives, and a lot of them may look familiar with the, uh, the black ebony handles and the silver bolsters as opposed to the wood. But anyways, super, super utilitarian and super easy to use, great knives, right? These are awesome. Um, it's funny, this I've had this one for a long time. My son wanted one when he was younger to hunt with, so I gave him one like this. Um, this one I bought at a garage sale for 20 bucks, and this is almost a $100 knife now. Um, they're great knives. They're, 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 they're hard steel, they keep a decent edge. They're not too bad to sharpen and keep sharp. Um, now, going back to, I want to think about, if you look, this is an old uh, case, an American-made case, and you can see how much that knife's been sharpened, and this is my granddad's hunting knife. It's pretty dull right now, but this was his knife. He passed away. I got a hold of it, and I got it and brought it home, and I haven't used it, but you can see how much that blade's been taken down. He either carried this old case for his whole life on a leather belt with some cartridges and a cartridge carrier, or... Before that, sometimes he carried this old K-Bar, which he actually gave to my dad. And my dad hunted with me my whole life, but never really hunted. He was not the kind of guy who liked to, to kill animals, but he always went with us because it was fun and he wanted to be, wanted to be around and, 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 and present and, and do stuff like that with us. But this was my dad's hunting knife. He actually passed away four years ago uh, this month. So um, we have the gamut from old to new. But you can see this old stack leather case is just as serviceable as one of these brand new bucks and about the same size. Um, if you're just just getting into hunting or just getting into knives and shooting or, or whatever it may be, um, I, I, I would tell you to look at the replaceable blades pretty hard because if you're just now learning how to sharpen or learning to, you know, cutting your teeth on, on sharpening stones and wet stones and dry stones and, you know, how to get a good edge on a, on a blade, the replaceable blades are nice. Because you can take a few blades with you, it gets dull, pop it out, dispose of it properly, you got a brand new sharp knife. That's handy. Until you get the hang of sharpening, especially in the field, these are great. Okay, these are great. And for 
25 bucks. You can have a good serviceable knife. You can buy a few blades for another 20 bucks, six, 10. I don't know how many blades you can buy for 20, 25, 30 bucks. And you've got, you know, two, three, four complete butcherings, essentially of an animal from field dress to skin to, 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 to boning right here. And that's, you know, that's, that's pretty handy to have. Um, and there's a lot of options. Like I said, there's the outdoor edge, there's the Gerber, there's the Haviland. Um, I know there's other replaceable blades out there, but, uh, but yeah, cost of entry. These are great cost of entry. Your standard old bucks, buck one tens, the buck folder, the one ten folders, probably the most, one of the most iconic designs ever, a lock back, uh, single blade folder, you know, your old case and straight folders, folders. If you can find them, the American made ones are awesome. Uh, some hardware stores still have the old case display with a good fixed blade knife in there, stack leather fixed blade knife like this. And you can see this one's about 60 years old, still very serviceable. So um, in essence, what I was trying to get at was a lot of times the best knife to use for hunting is the one you have on you. So have fun with that. And uh, yeah, like, subscribe, comment. I uh, hope you guys got a little something out of this video. Um, if you have questions or want to tell me what your favorite knife is, please do. I love having banner in the comments and uh, happy hunting.